you will hear over and over. How? Why? You are here because of your position in the community, your influence in the community, to try to get this thing passed. And we can't stress that enough, the importance of it. Uh, I'm going to read a, a few short uh, briefs from the uh, East Plus. Uh, it is an extension of the current tax, not an additional tax. Renewal of the East Plus will start when the East Plus 4 ends. It won't begin. You won't have to be having two taxes. Sales tax is paid by everyone shops in Valdosta, including visitors. This means over half the funds collected come from the non-residents of our community. And I've often been asked often time, how much is that? And I say if it's any, it's a help. If anybody helps me improve my public schools, it's a plus. Provides modern, safe, secure school facilities for children in Limestone and Dallas City Schools. Quality schools promote a better future for our students and economic growth for our community. I've said that before, I'll say it again, continues on and on. Now we are coming to have East Plus 5 overview, overview by the superintendents of the Lyons County and the Dallas City School System. Starting with Mr. Mike Rush. We had a board meeting last night which uh, plans were revealed for our new high school, so that made the front page of the paper today. So much of what we're going to be doing with our East Plus uh, 5 funds uh, will be to construct a new Valdosta High School. Why a new high school? Uh, the one that we currently have was occupied in 1972. Um, though it's had some cosmetic changes on the inside, the infrastructure is still that of 1972. We've got major infrastructure problems out there, including a deteriorated sewer, uh, sewer infrastructure, water infrastructure, air chiller. Uh, it's estimated that it would cost about $17 million to finish or, or modify the existing uh, facility. Um, and then, where would we have school while these modifications are being done? Uh, the high school's on a slab, the sewage infrastructure is underneath that slab. You would basically have to go in and jackhammer the entire slab out to make those modifications. Um, also, uh, there's a need for modern uh, vocational classrooms in our high school. Uh, we don't have the space to uh, offer our children what they need in the area of the vocational uh, or CTA as it's called now. Um, East Plus also helps our school district fund the purchase of school buses, uh, technology such as computers, uh, textbooks, and other uh, renovations and modifications as are needed in the district at all of our schools. I will say that if our district had not had the East Plus funds with the downturn in the economy, then we would not have been able to do what we've done. Uh, it certainly would have uh, taxed the, the property owners uh, a great deal if we were not able to uh, fund projects with our East Plus. We also purchase textbooks, instructional supplies, uh, band equipment, safety and security equipment. Um, we equip our new constructions, additions, and renovations with East Plus funds. We continue to upgrade system-wide instructional and administrative technology. Um, part of this is if there's enough collection, uh, that we, we are going to try to take a look at after the high school if possible of modifications or, or rebuilding of our district office, which uh, if you've been here a long time, you know that's <coughs> part of the old high school uh, on the back side, so it's in bad shape also. Uh, those are the projects that we're looking at doing for Valdosta City Schools. Uh, we look to finish what we started. Uh, this community has always supported our construction projects at our new schools. To me, you can see what we've done with this tax. It's not like any other tax to me. You can see what we've done as we brought new schools online. 
to educate our boys and girls. So thank you for being here and thank you for your support. There's a lot been said uh, already about SPLOST and, and the purpose of it. I think one of the things that bears reiterating is that you know, we really only have two options in the state of Georgia in terms of local funding uh, for our public schools. And one is increase the village rate, you know, and that falls on the backs of property owners uh, within the county, or SPLOST. Uh, again, the research tells us that more than 50%, at least in Lowndes County and Valdosta City, of visitors, people driving up and down 75, our neighbors, contiguous counties around us and beyond, uh, that come into our community and shop, buy gas, eat out, go to the mall, spend the night. And it's just one of those things that, that we believe, it, it doesn't, we don't have to think about that very long. Uh, that it's just something that we need to continue. Um, it has made significant um, improvements in our existing facilities, as well as has allowed us and enabled us to build new facilities. Uh, we've built three new schools in the last couple of SPLOS in Lowndes County. Um, and it's just one of those things that we feel like we need to continue. And, and we're being good stewards of the taxpayers' money when we utilize SPLOS dollars. As Marty said, it's one of those things that it's tangible. You, know, you can see improvements to facilities and see new buses as they go down the roads and transport our students, our children, safely from home to school and back. Uh, we can see new schools. And so that's one of those things that we think is also helps us uh, promote the SPLOS tax and the, to continue that as we go. In Lowndes County, uh, one of the things that we need to do, uh, Lowndes High is one of very few 6A high schools in the state of Georgia that doesn't have a fine arts auditorium. And so that's something in SPLOS 5 that we would like to become somewhat the capstone or the cornerstone on that campus, that we would provide those opportunities for students in the fine arts uh, programs in the middle schools and the high schools, even hopefully grow that into the elementary schools, could be used by the community, uh, and could become a show place on that campus as well. We also, safety and security is always on the forefront of our thoughts and our minds as far as school safety. Uh, we would be able to uh, add some access control, some additional security cameras in each of our schools. We have a couple of situations in the lobbies, of, particularly in a couple of our elementary schools, that access is is pretty easily um, accessible to, to, to visitors. Uh, we don't like to think about strangers and some of the tragedies that we're aware of that have happened across the country, happening in our own community, but nonetheless, we don't want to be naive and stick our head in the sand and think that couldn't happen. So we just want to be, again, prudent and prepared uh, and provide a safe and positive learning environment for all of our students as well as our staff also. Um, certainly improvements and enhancement in our instructional technology and infrastructure that goes with that. All of you are aware in, in your personal life as well as regardless of the business that you're in, technology is constantly evolving and improving at a faster rate than we can keep up with. But to be good stewards of preparing our students to be successful after graduation, whether that's a post-secondary institution, uh, full-time service in the military, or, or full-time in the workforce, we need to be able to upgrade and enhance not only the technology devices we put in front of students, but also the infrastructure that supports that. And we SPLOST helps us go a long ways to do that. I mentioned transportation a while ago. We automatically think of buses, um, but we also think about maintenance vehicles and other vehicles that it takes to operate the school system and to be able to put them in reliable and, and uh, dependable vehicles as well. Um, I'd like to, Mr. Tucker, Mr. Eunice, for just a moment, deviate from the script and do one thing, um, and that is there, there's more than one person in this room that's been involved in all five um, SPLOST campaigns in this system or in this community. But, but Marty Rush, as you all know, has announced just recently that he's about to retire and uh, in one form or a fashion, in various roles now as a superintendent, he's had a hand in all of these SPLOST. And I just, for, for just one minute, if we could indulge me to just tell him thank you, and we're looking forward again to his leadership as we go forth with SPLOS 5 as well. Thank you.